I am perpendicular to the beach road, the famous waterfront of Puduche. The streets were broad, clean, and had generous pavements clinging to them. All buildings had a grey facade with white window panes. Street names were printed both in French and Tamil. The streets were tree-lined and lush green gardens laced the crossroads. When I read the next paragraph, actually, uh, I want to tell you, Lata, this is, this is where I really felt. It's a small paragraph of five, uh, you know, uh, just five sentences, five lines here in the book. But, uh, you know, I said to myself, you deserve to work in Maharashtra. <laughs> Any one of us, any one of us, any one of us, I mean, we will recognize uh, a Maharashtra Herald writer by the next, just the next five lines. <laughs> now listen very carefully because this is, this is really what is, this book is about, you know. Don't think the book is about, uh, uh, about, uh, you know, suspense and murder and killings. No, it's about, it's about the way the mind works and how the mind sees things and how the mind doesn't see things. A rickshaw driver informed us. Now look at the informer. This is the key. Who is telling you this? It's the rickshaw driver. It's not some, you know, hi-fi sophisticated guy. It's the rickshaw driver informed us of a striking commonality between the two parts of the city. People in the French part speak Tamil. And people in the Tamil part speak French. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure if the word foreigner applied to anyone at all in Pondicherry. We got off the rickshaw at the famous Gandhi Salai. A low concrete ledge separated the rock shore from the expansive pavement. The waterfront at 6.30 in the morning was an eclectic mix of people walking, jogging, meditating or simply ogling. Rohit and I started with a brisk walk and gradually started jogging. We ran in silence, soaking in the serene sea breeze. A couple of fishing boats were already out at sea. The sun's rays were doing a little dance on the water. The salt in the air tickled our nostrils. My heart was singing. This book makes you sing, actually. You know, If you read this book very carefully, it's a nice book. It's a, it's a kind of a song. It's a novel, but in its own way, it's a song. I felt blissful. I was doing what I loved the most, running with a man I loved beside me. Institution that had 
been home for us for almost five years. Yeah, it is lady has taken us for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Only mad people went to the film and television institute of India. Today, madness is a prerequisite for admission here. <laughs> yeah. To the outside world, we were the height of types, press in our denims, last khadi kurtas, huge spectacles, frames of shop, frames, I use spectacle frames, and shut them back. Or everybody here doing any course, but this was a standard of uh, this thing, you know, apparel of one. And collaborate footwear to go. More and above all this. And see the minute way this lady has described. Uh, the outsiders called it hollow hype, but we knew better. There was the dress code of madness. The, mad, the madder you were, the better you put it in this attempt. If you are short of madness, you would look uncomfortable and awkward in it. It would then be labelled as pseudo on canvas. Shatrugan Sinai was a very pseudo character here. I slipped into the attire smoothly within the first three months itself. I was mad to, go to the core. Looking at the world through my camera lens made me a true dream merchant. Movie making was my passion. When I was not behind the camera, I made movies in my mind. That's a creative. Creativity is there in what? Earlier in my the five years I spent in this temple of learning were by far the best five years of my life. We can go on believe her if she says this. I can The first project I did was a short film. I can never forget that. An experience of lifetime and the experience for posterity. I leave it at that. Yes. Thank you. This is another character. Huh? This is another character. Yeah, that's 
Uh, That's why that line is there, huh? running with the, you know, what I like to do most. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, Incognito is her first book and it's a psychological thriller, a thr thriller sorry. Uh, Lata has used her experience in psychology uh, to take advantage of it. She gives a hair-raising, twisting, turning story to us, so I invite uh, Madam Lata to talk about it. Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you so much for turning up in such huge numbers. Puna has always been very kind to me. As one of my earlier colleagues told me yesterday, welcome. It's a great homecoming for you. And I really, really cherish this moment. Thank you so much. Uh, well, about the book, as she rightly said, this is my debut novel. Uh, but the uh, thought has been plaguing me for quite some time. Uh, I knew that before my time is up on this uh, planet, I will write one novel and uh, it will be the beginning of a long journey, I knew that. So last year seemed to be the right time for me, I took about 8 months to write this book and uh, since I do a lot of training on emotional intelligence and I work specifically with women to a large extent, I have met a lot of uh, emotionally battled women you know, and uh, survivors. I must say that they are survivors because they have really fought all odds and uh, they, have, they are living life to the fullest now. So these women have already always inspired me, they've always overawed me and I knew that I must write a book that talks about women, you know, and uh, that talks about women who overcome all kinds of odds and also about women who are going through a lot of other difficulties in terms of identifying their true selves because I've also noticed that most of us, now I'm not talking only about women, that most of us live with a gap, a huge gap between our current selves and our ideal selves. And that is the gap that I've tried to bridge with this book. And uh, it was a wonderful journey writing the book. I, my life has put in front of me such rich experiences ever since this book has come out. Uh, because uh, I'm sure you've heard of Satya Saran, the ex-editor of Kamina. She got hold of the book, um, you know, and uh, she read it. And uh, she told me that I would write the forward to the book. And this is out of the blue. I've always wanted to meet Satya Saran as a student. I used to read Femina. I used to read the last column on the last page of Femina from me to you. And I've grown up with that column. And it was a beautiful coincidence, almost like a divine intervention for me when she said I'll write the foreword and that's how the foreword is. And later on I knew, I came to know she is very strict about writing forewords for books. And uh, at my launch, I had an official launch on May 31st in Bombay. She was there. And so also Mr. Tom Alter, who's also read the book. So she told the audience and the media there that usually I don't concede so quickly to writing a foreword, but I like the book so much and it, it has stayed with me for a long time and that's why I chose to write the foreword for her book and that meant a lot to me. And uh, another thing is Mr. Tom Alter has liked the book so much that uh, he's also told me that we'll do a theatrical adaptation of it. So I'm looking forward to working with that. has really put me in front of people whom I just used to admire earlier. Today they are then my mentors and role models. And what makes the Pune event very special for me is the people out here. Joe Pinto and Harry, they were two of my mentors and whom I learned a lot. They used to scold me a lot, especially Joe. I don't think he remembers it. He used to make me rewrite my copies. And I've actually cried. He's made me cry. Yeah. <laughs> Today he makes me cry for a different reason. Thank you so much. Yes. And of course, Harry was an inspiration. He used to always want me to sit beside him while he's typing his copy. He said, you don't do anything, but just sit there beside me. And he would have the cigarette in his mouth, unlit. Because it, it didn't matter to him whether it was lit or not. It just He just had to have the cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> yes. And for hours together, he would type without lighting the cigarette. And I learned a lot from these mentors and of course Vijay Lele used to sit directly opposite me. I remember that he was our features editor there. And I used to always say, this man has so much style. You know, he, he's got a, he, he writes his own style statement. And thank you so much Vijay for coming over here. It means a lot to me. And Sushma, a very, very close buddy. She's here. Meera Joshi, another mentor of mine is sitting there. And it is, it's great to have you here. And just now somebody has given me a bolt out of the blue. Triveni is here. Triveni, thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. She's traveled all the way from Baramati, I'm told. And she's come straight here. It 
This means a lot to me. Today. I couldn't have missed this. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Really, by the way, wrote a book on Mitchell's a biography. Oh wow! 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 wow. <laughs>